Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to nice and crisp Austin, Texas here day after my birthday. I had a great birthday. Thanks for all the uh, uh, nice birthday wishes I got. I really appreciate it. But I had a great time yesterday. Um, let's do a quick update. My spreadsheets are still jacked up, of course. That's the story of my life. Um, I'm getting a new data service, but I haven't uh, I haven't decided which one it is yet. So I, I can't believe Google Sheets. I was just kind of hoping Google Sheets would start working. I, I just can't believe it's so bad. Um, but anyway, I had a great birthday. But let's see what the market's doing. All right, here's SPX. You can go, it's, it's, you can see it's going straight sideways. You can bet if we had a profit box, it would look about like this one. So it's probably roughly inside it. Just a second. Jackson, what are you growling at? Hang on. Hello. Jackson, knock it off. Jackson, knock it off. All right. So if we had a profit box, it'd be, uh, it'd be inside of it. Um, let's look at NASDAQ. Same thing. We'll look at Russell. What I always say, the strongest or the weakest today is the strongest. My gosh. My gosh. A lot of people say the Russell is also the Trump trade and he's been doing better in the polls and, the betting markets prediction markets lately so maybe that has something to do with it well in any event that's that's crazy good job russell good job for anyone that has iwmy or any of the russell based etfs all right the dividend estimates we can look at these uh 40 cents WDTE, 43 cents on triple QI. Of course, this isn't working half the, so it's, it's, I don't even know why I'm showing it to you guys. Uh, I mean, half the stuff on it's not working. Well, we can look at call spreads. I've been updating this information. Um, for instance, this one right here, Apple. This was this said 235 yesterday, but they rolled out to 245. They sold the 240 and bought the 245s, for, and they expire next uh, next Friday. They're 5.9 percent out of the money. Now we don't know how far. We don't know how Apple's doing. Is what's frustrating. It won't give me a price of Apple. It gives me a price of Apple. For the call spreads, all that matters is this first price. So other than the PayPal that's jacked up, everything else is is <clears throat> is working fine here and updated. So you can see the ones that are killing it. It's the same ones as yesterday. We're getting ready to look at the uh, buffer report, and I'm sure Coney's going to be doing good in the buffer report. Um, here's the triple threat spreadsheet. There's Coney's, you know, that's... The triple threat spreadsheets, combination of the buffer report and the call spread report. All right, here's the index buffer. Um, half of this stuff's not working. So once again, I don't know why I'm showing it to you. God, it's so frustrating. I, I just love when this stuff used to work. I just don't know why it never works. Used to it not work for like an afternoon. I'd hit refresh a couple times to start working, but this has been like two days. That's why I didn't want to spend the time to retool my entire spreadsheet last night if it was going to start working again today. I just cannot believe it can't pull a price. I, I don't. Does anyone else have this problem with Google Sheets? 
All right. Well, Nvidia is killing it. Look at this. They're almost they're up almost as much as the parent. Of course, we see that all the time. Now the Jay's doing the call spreads. Lots of times they're up as much as the parent or even more, like in the case of Tesla today. It's not just a given they're going to or in the case of WiMAX. It's not just a given they're always going to get their ass kicked by the parent. <clears throat> Although the, the counter to that is Fibby's catching as much downside as the parent today. And Snowy has some buffers. Snowy's doing all right, but. SMCY up, but not near as much as the parent. Airbnb up just about as much as the parent. That's really good to see. All right, so let's see. What else can we talk about? Um, well, I'm sure the freaking volatility metric thing probably went positive this morning. Of course, it'd been nice to know that two weeks ago that the market was going to. No, it hasn't yet. All right. People are still people are still have hedges on. So this is it. now also remember this right here is reflective of the volatility on the SPX. So and the SPX has been weaker. <clears throat> it still hasn't been right, but it's been more right than it has on the Russell. If I was running the same index on the Russell and I could do that, maybe we should start doing that. It would surely have been a buy for uh, a while now. All right. Well, yeah, this is. Uh, it's just because the election, I'm going to have a special uh, uh, election show here this afternoon. I'll talk about that specifically but all right so this is still so it's still cautious for what it's worth like i say it hasn't been worth much lately okay so let's look at some of the meme trades i think i have a gme trade that expires this week Well, let's see how the cluster fuck spreads doing bearish DJT. There it is. It's down 34 bucks today. It's the first day. My DJT strategy hasn't made thousands of bucks, but the one that we would, that we were, that I showed yesterday, this one right here, just profits off time passing and volatility related to Trump. So, the way it works, just real quick, is the short, we're selling the 33 call. This was yesterday when the stock was at like 27. So it was pretty far out of the money. Selling the 33 call for $6.60, which is way too much money. So then we have to buy something else so we aren't just naked short. <clears throat> so then we choose something to buy. We bought something for 10 bucks, so our risk is the difference. It's about three, three or four bucks. This is a great trade because, in my opinion, it's these calendar spreads, and diagonal spreads, as time passes, we're just hoping to, we're, we're trying to get to the election. There it is. And based on where the price of DJT is, this is how much the option spread will be worth. With one caveat, depending on where volatility is. So <clears throat> volatility stays where is which it's not going to do the the stock stays where it is which is probably not going to do either it's worth 435 dollar profit but where this is really a bet on increased volatility and then it's worth 700 dollars profit and it, it makes a work profit more profit all the way around and makes the break even price lower if volatility goes up, you can have volatility go up so much it makes it where the break even goes down to five but of course that's not going to happen but is volatility going to pop 50, 60 percent in front of the election? Yes, I think so. And this is a this is a bet on that. So anyway, but this this actually is. <clears throat> that one is actually down, uh, down a little bit today. But then I also show just for people wanting to take the opposite opinion. Here's a bearish, uh, not bearish. It's uh, let's see. 
bearish on DJT stock price. If you all right, then this is called a broken wing butterfly, but this is bearish on DJT stock price. So this this is a spread, it's three legged spread. And the play is that DJT does not go above $35 a share. That's one play. And also the play in this spread is a short volatility play. If volatility goes down, it helps this spread out. But um, so in another in event, this is a, this is kind of like a bet on Kamala. And the other one's kind of like a bet on Trump. Um all right, so let's see what else we have. And like I say, I'll make a special video on those. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do some more trades today. Okay, so the quarter million dollar baby. Let's look at that. So here's the quarter million dollar baby triple Q edition, <clears throat> and this is for smaller accounts that maybe don't. And this isn't a spread. Like the SPX one that I showed you guys was a little bit better trade because it was a spread, and SPX is. Um, they're bigger and SPX options don't have, or they don't pay a dividend. So their option prices are easier to price in my opinion. Well, anyway, that, that, but you have to have a huge account and be able to trade spreads. So this is for somebody that maybe just has a quarter million dollar account is worried about the rest of the year. So what this would be is a 475 put right now, the market, uh, this is the Q's, right? Yeah, this is the Q's. Right now, the market's trading at 490. So it's be a 475 put. But basically, if you had a 10% drop, a 10% drop, this spread would be worth an additional $14,000. So yeah, your quarter million dollar account would do bad if the market dropped 10%. It would be down about 25,000. This spread would offset 14,000 of it market drop 20 percent your quarter million dollar is worth the spy or growth stocks would be worth down 50 would be down 50,000 this would replace 42,000 of it and it lasts till new year's eve you don't have to cash it in till new year's eve what i always tell everyone is the market goes down you know it drops 20 percent right around the time of the election but you don't have to sell this and take the capital gain you can just wait if the market goes back which it, you know v bottoms and goes back then you uh then you're you aren't out <clears throat> you don't have to make the decision whether to sell or not but at the same token if the market keeps dropping you're hanging on to it so you still have the protection so the market is down 30 percent you're glad that you didn't sell it to 20 percent so this is designed to be able to hang on till new year's eve and then on new year's eve you have to you have to sell it i was just saying if you're a bull you can hope it rallies back by new year's eve you know um no one's really rooting for the market to go down 30 percent but if you have a quarter million dollars of spy or in this case cues, you know, that you want to protect, uh, you know, there's th this isn't a terrible way to do this. Now, the downside of it is it costs sixty nine hundred dollars. It costs seven thousand dollars. Anyway, there'll be more content on that. That's the quarter million dollar baby. And the and uh, and I did that for the cues and the and uh, the spy. And they're both up big today just because the market's down. It's not like they're doing anything special. Um but on the for someone following that on the queues, it's five four seventy fives, and on uh, the spies it was five five fifty fives. So we'll follow that every day. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a separate show on on the election and arbitraging the election. Um, so we'll talk more about that. I'm sorry the buffer report and stuff doesn't work. Um, I guess I just, it's like pulling off a Band-Aid. Once I go to a new data provider, I have to change everything. And I mean, and, oh my gosh, it's just going to be a nightmare, I'm afraid. Or, you know, I'm thinking about just scrapping everything and going to freaking Excel, but now, oh gosh. All right, well, anyway, I'll figure it out. Um, like I say, I appreciate all the uh, birthday wishes. Let's just, we'll see what the market's doing. Sorry that my timing system has sucked lately. It's sticking by its guns. Maybe the market will still go down from here or something. I mean, the spy started going down yesterday, but who knows? Um, 
you know, my system probably is designed for normal times and it's not normal times. So, you know, anyway, uh, but the, my system works eight, probably seven or eight times out of 10. So that, that's, that's all I expect. But this time's not one of them, not so far. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being cautious right now. Discretion is the better part of valor is something my mom always used to teach me. And it's true. Uh, that goes for lots of uh, areas of life and, and investing it is as well. But uh, let's remain cautious. Let's see what's moving today. Yeah, a bigger coin base. So it's, I guess it's the Trump trade. It's the crypto trade and Russell. So maybe today's arbitrage show will be an arbitrage bet between uh, the prediction markets and something with the Russell. That might be interesting. Anyway, be looking for that. Be look looking for that. Boy, that's something else. Mr.'s up. Uh, Look at, I mean, look at NVIDIA, nothing compared to, NVIDIA looks like the market, and that ought to tell you something. NVIDIA's chart looks just like the Q's or the SPY. Uh, obviously, I think we know the reason why that is. The Q's and the SPY basically are NVIDIA nowadays. NVIDIA and Apple, you know, and Google and Meta. Uh, GME, I'm always kind of curious about GME. I just think it's going to pop to 41 day. Uh, or or higher, so I do meme trades in that lots of times. So what's going on with Tesla today? Okay, well after yesterday's big drop, it's I guess <laughs> they're saying it's bouncing. It's up half a percent. You really can't tell by looking at the chart. It's not significant. Whatever it's doing isn't significant in relation to what it has been doing. All right, this Vivix right here, this is professional. This is uh, people that this measures volatility on the VIX index, volatility itself. Retail traders don't trade the VIX index that much. Um, this is kind of a pro measure of volatility and, and bad is good on this index. When it's going up, that's bad for the market. Like when it was going up back here, that's why my system uh, was bearish because it means people are people are worried about the market, particularly professionals. Well, that's the professional measure right there. And here is an amateur measure. So amateurs, you can see relatively, they aren't worried about it. They're, they're selling volatility, which is good for the market, which is why the market's rallied. In fact, the amateurs have been selling volatility since, you know, last Friday. So, but my system puts a premium on what these guys are doing. So we'll keep a special eye on that. Uh, Jay also looks at Vivix a lot. Vivix is a good thing for everyone to look at. Uh, I'm sure I know a lot of my people. I think Tom looks at Vivix and some of my other regulars are Vivix people. You can tell a lot by Vivix. So look at this. Even if you zoom out, it's not like you have to be super zoomed in to be bearish. Even if you're zoomed out on this time frame, you would have to say that, you know, these people in volatility's up. I mean, and this time frame, we would want to see prices of, you know, a Vivix, a, a normal Vivix, a bull market Vivix is 90, 80, 70, something like that. That's what it is when it's going up here. It was 78 back there. There it is, 78, you know, 87, 83, 80. You, you get the idea. Whenever we have elevated Vivix, it's in times that the market pulls back. Watch. Go back here. That was November of 2021. It got above. And then that that was, and then the S&P went from, it got above right there. And the S&P went a little bit higher. It can go higher at the same time volatility does for a while, like it's doing now. Here's an example of it. You made a new high, but still volatility kept staying elevated up here. Up here, and yeah, the market's in the market sold off. It sold off all the way to to down here. Anyway, something interesting to look at. The VIX and the Vivix are one of many things we can look at. All right, so TLT. Remember, we used to look at this every day because of Tress. Oh my God, Tress would be killing it because bonds are finally starting to trend. 
And I, I knew they would as soon as Jay shut Tress down. There's back in the Tress heyday right back there. Jay said he probably would have had a plus 20% month there if, um, I mean, who knows if they hadn't shut the fund down, but that's what you're playing for. That right there, that right there, they rebalanced, they would have made hella money. Then probably again, uh, probably again later. It wasn't Tress's fault. Tress was just a long volatility strategy. Strategy was introduced at the wrong time. The strategies just do what the strategies are designed to do. The market has to cooperate. It's like I always say about call spreads. The call spread strategy that Jay is doing is great, but we still need the market to go up past those call spreads for it to show up in the returns. You, you So it's like anything else, you know, you need the market to go up. So, but, you know, so you could also just buy the stock. You could buy stock in Tesla instead of Tesla. If you knew for sure the market for Tesla was going up, you would just buy Tesla stock. The thing is, you don't really always know that for sure. And you buy Tesla and it gives you a little added dimension. Um, you know, because you had like, I mean, another, it's like having a business with another profit center. So as you can still profit a little bit off the NAV appreciation as it goes up, but you profit a lot off the, off the dividend, of course. All right. I'm going to go make these uh, next videos and uh, go look at my spreadsheet. I appreciate you guys for being here. I just wanted to show everyone. I hope you got to see, I mean, right now it's working. Let's look at this single stock buffer report. Look at that. I mean, they're all working except for PayPal. So, I mean, it's a great day in the market. I mean, look at the Mr. NVIDIA, SMCI. Bob is not working. Look at Airbnb outperforming on the upside. Let's go to the index buffer and see if it started working. When all this works, it's wonderful. But yeah, we have a bunch of blank spots down here. The triple threat. I really love the triple threat. All right, I'll go get all this stuff working again. Uh, I appreciate you guys for being here. Have a good day.